Hello and welcome to a rather special Cardio Live. I'm James Bagger, I'm the founder of Cardio Magazine and today I'm in a studio, very socially distanced, chatting to Stuart Folds, Chairman and CEO of Trust Ford. Stuart, thank you very much for uh, having us up here to, uh, to have this conversation. Um, nice to have a catch up, we did one during lockdown, didn't we? Yeah. Um, how have things been since lockdown for, for the business? Well, you know, James, we, we spoke a few months ago at that point. We were locked down, now we're back in the business up and running. Uh, and I have to say it's been really successful. I was obviously very nervous about what was actually going to happen because there's all this talk about pent-up demand. And certainly in June and through July, we spent most of our time delivering the cars that we hadn't to manage to deliver in, in March. And also to service and uh, MOT cars that, that had missed out. And then, of course, there was a big uh, volume of people whose PCP and higher purchase had, had expired. That had to be sorted as well. So these early weeks when we got back to work uh, were very, very busy. And I guess my sort of concern was, you know, what was it going to look like after, after that happened? But, you know, we went on and uh, we had a really successful July, followed by a really successful August. And then there was, of course, the big question about what was going to happen in September. Um, but for Trust Ford, I mean, it's been been really fantastic. I mean, one of the big pride points for, for us, and I'll be very specific about the number, was we delivered 20,022 new vehicles in quarter three, which is a record for us. Uh, it was an absolutely outstanding uh, it, performance. It has been amazing to see the bounce back that the industry has, has managed to achieve, hasn't it? I mean, and it's come across from new to used cars. Yeah. Is there anything in particular, any trends that you've spotted? I mean, we mentioned there the pent-up demand, but surely by now that has, uh, that's been eased. Well, yeah, I think it has, and I, I guess if there's any concern, and you know, talking to some other colleagues within the industry, there's a, a, a bit of a concern as to what happens as we go through Q4. So far, it's been okay. Um, we've remained pretty buoyant. Our service departments are very busy. Our parts plus business is is, is absolutely flying just now. I mean, we've got a record performance coming out of that. New cars are, are good. Commercial vehicles are good. You know, and as I said, back in Q3, we were. Uh, five million quid up year on year, which just seems remarkable. Um, so have you made up for the losses that you had during lockdown? Not quite, but not far away. Um, and that's been really encouraging because obviously as you went into lockdown, there's no money coming in, no profit coming in, and there was obviously a big concern about liquidity. From our own perspective, we were absolutely fine with that. We had pulled together um, some additional funding. We had £700 million worth of liquidity available to us. Uh, throughout the, the, the whole of that pandemic period. And I'm delighted to say that throughout the, the whole of that period, we actually ran with the best part of £100 million in the bank rather than, than overdrawn. So, I mean, it was, it was just great. But these are extraordinary times. Have you had to make any changes, any major changes to the business during this time to cope? I mean, I'm, I'm talking especially in terms of sales. I mean, how's your online proposition at the moment? Well, there's a lot of talk about online. Um, we, we sort of carried out a bit of a survey, uh, quite an extensive survey back during lockdown to try and understand what the appetite was for customers in terms of, of home deliveries and online purchases. Uh, and I have to say that it, surprisingly, despite uh, what a lot of people are claiming, the vast majority of our customers said they still wanted the experience of actually taking delivery of the car from the showroom, which kind of dispels this sort of, uh, story that, that everybody's switching to online purchases. I, I just don't get that. And you know, certainly the evidence we've seen through supplying some of these online suppliers and our, ourselves, their own experiences, yeah, people do, they'll do all the research, they'll ask all the questions, they'll do the majority of it. But when it actually comes to getting the car, there seems to still be an appetite for that visit to take place to go through the whole show of having the car unveiled and being able to drive the car out of the dealership. So, you know, I'm not, not sure about it. Yeah. So what are your thoughts when it comes to pe people looking in at the industry? Is it people like Kazoo that have managed to raise £450 million on a £2 billion uh, value, valuation for that company. You're running a, a, a traditional dealership that's got online opportunities. I mean, do you, do you think there's a... Why is there such a huge disparity between these valuations of these businesses? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, if you actually look at the kazoo valuation of £2 billion, I mean, that's a huge amount of money, and you just wonder whether that's 
done through brokers trying to talk the whole game up. But, you know, as I say, our evidence so far is, yeah, people do a load of research, they'll do a lot of questions online. But when it comes to actually buying the car, yeah, they can buy the car, but they actually still want to get that experience of visiting the dealership. So, you know, you've got guys like Haycar, you've got Cinch, you've got Kazoo, all out there sort of fighting to try and grab some business. I'm not sure. I'm it's, just not sure. it's certainly going to get quite a crowded market quite Very quite much. quickly, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, what about these restrictions that we're that we're seeing, Stuart? I mean, this week um, when we're recording this, we, we've been reporting about the Welsh lockdown mm -hmm. that's coming in. The dealers are going to have to close for two weeks there in in the northeast, northwest. Things are really really tough when it comes to COVID. What are your thoughts about what might happen to to businesses like yours across the country? Well. I think the Welsh lockdown is something that they've chosen to do uniquely. Listening to Nicola Sturgeon, I live in Scotland, listening to Nicola Sturgeon, she doesn't believe that that's something that's going to happen up there. Listening to Boris and his, uh, his guys, uh, there will be some local restrictions, some local uh, localised lockdowns. It just seems to be... Uh, you know, there's no there's no consistency here, and that's that's one of the big concerns. Fortunately, we don't have any businesses in Wales. Uh, I have some colleagues uh, who do, and you know that'll be very damaging from their perspective. I don't expect businesses to close down, uh, and you know, touch wood when I say that. But our businesses in Manchester are still performing okay, um, very buoyant. Our businesses in Yorkshire are still performing very well. Um, so you know. It seems to be okay. It, it, it's just you know we're in we're in completely uncharted waters. And, I and that's despite the restrictions that are in place in Manchester and, and Yorkshire. This, you're still getting the same level of inquiries, or has it tailed off at no, all? It's 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 remained pretty buoyant, which is surprising, but it has. Yeah, so it's certainly be good news for other dealers that that is the case because in Wales, I mean, I know that, that some of the dealers that were reporting drop off from up to 70% of inquiries. Mm. So do you think the government needs to support this industry at all? We've had much talk about a scrappage scheme, we've had talk about a VAT cut. Do you think the government needs to, needs to support this industry? I think one of the problems, James, uh, is that there have been too many... Uh, chief execs out there that have been talking the share prices up by talking about how fantastically well they've done throughout this whole period. And if I was sat there as the government, my question would be, well, if you're doing so well, why do you need a scrappage scheme? So I think we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot with this, to be honest. Uh, I don't see that happening at all. I think the industry's doing OK. Um, and we're no better nor worse than some of the other industries that are out there that are struggling as well. You know, the, the, the hospitality industry is on its knees. They're probably in much more need of help than we are. Uh, but in answer to your question, I don't see a scrappy scheme coming. I think that we've, as I say, shot ourselves in the foot. A fat change, don't think so. I think the biggest concern that we should all have today is what's going to happen with Brexit. It's the Brexit thing that's the big talk today and what the tariff could potentially look like. That, that, that's something we have to be really concerned about. How do you think that will affect your business? I mean, if there is, there is a no deal. Well, if there's no deal, then some of the tariffs that potentially are going to be levied, uh, you know, 10 and 15 percent on car prices and parts and all of that. I mean, that's uh, that's horrendous. So, uh, you know, we need to, to he, he needs to try and get a deal done because a no deal Brexit, Brexit for us and other industries has got all the it's, it's a disaster. Stuart, are you managing to plan at all for your business going forward? I mean, it's such a change in picture, isn't it? Near enough on a, on a weekly basis. I mean, how are you coping? Um, when it comes to, to planning investment and, uh, and other things going forward? Well, we've got a pretty comprehensive investment plan which we've carried out um, a lot this year. We've got a lot planned for next year. And in terms of actual planning, we're in the process of our budget planning for 2021 uh, as we speak. The guys are away working through that. Um, we're planning for 2021 to be back to some degree of normality. I think COVID will still be with us. But I think from, from what we've seen over the past three or four months, uh, if this continues at the level that it's at, then I think that we can plan to some degree with confidence that 2021 will be OK. So when you, when you say normality, I mean, what does, what does that normality look like? Because at the moment, I mean, we are in a very, very strange place, aren't we? Used car prices are absolutely rocketed. Demand is huge for used cars and new cars. Is that normal? Is that what's going to happen going forward? 
<laughs> if I knew that, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't be sat here. I'd probably be sat on a beach in the Caribbean, to be honest. I don't know. Um, I think uh, we thought that the used car thing would die. It's not. It's stayed point. There's still this, um, you know, if you listen to the governments, the different governments, they're still talking about if you can, don't use public transport, don't car share, and all of that drives people to want to buy a car to get to their work. So that's been a very real positive for us. Uh, will it continue? I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly, we, we are planning at this point in time for 2021 to be a similar year to what happened in 2019. That's the best we can ask for today. I suppose, and the other thing is, there's a, there's a lot of consumers out there that have actually who've stayed in the job and are probably far better off than they have been in the past. I mean, we're hearing kind of anecdotally that people aren't going on holiday. They're not spending out on 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 many things that they could do in the past, going out to eat, for example. So actually, they've got more cash in yeah, the bank. Sure. So are you actually seeing that translate into into customers coming in? Um, are customers <coughs> coming to dealers saying, actually, I'm buying a car because I'm a little bit better than off than I was? Yeah, I think there's a bit of that. I mean, I think, as you say, there's people, the people that traditionally would have spent a load of money going abroad uh, can't do that. So they've got several thousand pounds probably uh, sitting that they, they need to, well, they don't need to spend, but they're choosing, choosing to spend. Uh, people going out to eat, uh, that's pretty much died, died on its feet as well in different parts of the country. You can't do that. Um, so, yeah, I think the disposable income for a lot of people is probably much greater today than it was uh, last year, uh, prior to this, this COVID. Do you see any big changes to the, to the way that you retail cars going forward? I mean, I know that there's been talk of these smart lab <coughs> concepts from, from Ford and Ford really radically changing the way that they do things. Can, can, are you going to be getting involved in any of that? Well, we're, we're, we're doing a smart uh, hub, um, which we will open at the end of this month, and that's going to be at Junction 32 uh, at Castleford. And that's that's the first of our smart hubs, so we're, we're sort of looking, you know, very carefully just exactly how that's going to pan out. Um, there's no reason why it won't be successful. The guy over in Turin has made a huge success of it. Ford have copied it in different parts of the world. We're adopting pretty much the same uh, principles, so uh, you know, I've got no reason to think that it won't work. And if it does, then that's something that will expand across the UK. And how does that <coughs> look different to a normal traditional dealer? It's a showcase, so it's really a showcase of vehicles. Um, the, the, the guys that, that run it from our point of view are much more casually dressed. <clears throat> it's a much much more laid back atmosphere. It's somewhere where you've really got, I guess, product geniuses that can take somebody through the car, show, the, the, show them the car or the van, uh, all the features and benefits. We will have demonstrators out in the car park so they can have a demonstration if they want. And if they want to transact, then we can do that, but most of the transactions will happen back in the main Ford store. That's kind of kind of how the whole thing works. So it's, it sounded like a, one of these pop-up store kind of concepts. Yeah. Is it? yeah. 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 And do you, do you think that's the way that car buying's going to go rather <coughs> than the online, pure online retailing? Well, I think that that's the sort of middle ground, if you like, because um, this isn't in a big huge shopping centre. This is more of a provincial type of shopping centre that gets big footfall, but not people that are in to spend high value uh, on high value products. Um, it's a showcase opportunity. <clears throat> it means when people go into that uh, shopping experience, they'll see the car. There'll be no high pressure selling. Uh, the car is there. It's open. They can talk to somebody that knows about the vehicle can give them all the facts and, and uh, you know information that they want. So yeah, I think it's it's something that somebody could potentially see the car and then having seen it, buy it online. Uh, you know, that, that, that potentially is something that will work, I think. Stuart, what, what are the benefits of being the, the, the largest Ford-owned dealer group? I mean, is it, is it, are there benefits or is there more restrictions? There's probably more problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, absolutely, before I came to, to work for Trust Ford, we always sort of thought from the outside that there would be special deals and special favours. Absolutely not. There was an absolute wall between Ford Motor Company and Trust Ford. We were treated exactly the same, if not probably a little bit harder than Ford dealers. We certainly don't get any favours, that's for sure. <laughs> um, um, and, and sort of to finish, you know, what are the positives that we can look forward to? I mean, let's let's give our viewers something something good to look forward to. Um, well, as I say, business is brisk. Um, you know, our sales teams are doing really well. Our, our, our parts departments and technicians are doing really well. Uh, for me, 
uh, you know, business is good. Let's let's keep that momentum going and uh, hopefully get through this winter. Get, let's get a Brexit deal done and uh, and look forward to the future successfully. Stuart, thank you very much for uh, having us up here for this special card deal. I really problem. appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. So huge thanks there to Stuart for uh, for that interview. If you want more videos like this one, log on to cardealermagazine.co.uk and click on the live tab at the top of the page. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>